We begin in Australia where the new year brings no relief from the catastrophe caused by bushfires. Across parts of the country's east coast, there are scenes like this. Homes and businesses reduced to charred rubble after fast-moving fires tore toward the coastline. Australian authorities estimate around 4,000 people are trapped on a beach in Malakuta by a fast-moving fire. Residents of this resort town in the state of Victoria say the smoke was so thick it blocked out the sun and turned the morning sky pitch black. Australia in the grips of an unfolding humanitarian crisis. Food, fuel and water running out. A 250 kilometre long emergency zone under threat from conditions even worse than New Year's Eve. With over 15 million acres across Australia currently burnt, 1,200 homes destroyed, almost 20 people have lost their lives. This is one of the worst fire seasons on record. But we must remember that this has happened before. It may be one of the worst in recent history, it may be the worst in history, but it is certainly not an outlier. There are others that have occurred. Way back in 1851, the Black Thursday fires that inflicted an enormous amount of damage on Victoria. In fact, it burnt 12 million acres. Almost as bad as the fire front across the entire country, but only in Victoria. That killed only a few people, but people nonetheless. That was a damaging event that happened all the way back then. Temperatures of up to 47 degrees. It was a terrifying day, I'm sure, to be a part of. And that was all caused by some dickhead Bullock driver. You remember Bullocks, those fucking weird looking animals? I'm pretty sure they're cows, I don't fucking know. Don't know much about Bullocks. Anyway, they, these farmer dudes left a couple of logs on fire and thus lighting the entire half of Victoria on fire. My point being, this has occurred before. Why? Because Australia is designed to burn. All these trees, right, through the winter period, through the autumn period, through the spring period, they drop their leaves, their, their branches, it creates this potential for a enormous firestorm to rip through with all that fuel on the ground. You mix that with outrageously dry conditions and you have a recipe for the disaster we are seeing. There are climate drivers at play here too. We are currently in a position of El Nino, right? In the Pacific and Indian dive. I can't fucking remember ladies and gentlemen. I did write it down. I'm not a client Simon. I can't even say client so climate climate scientists, so uh, that's why I wrote it down. There are current, <laughs> there are climate drivers at play here. Spring was extremely dry, the driest uh, spring on record according to the Bureau of Meteorology. A positive Indian Ocean Dipole event, which coincided with the El Nino in the Pacific, left Australia with extremely dry conditions, and places like Africa a lot wetter than usual. Now these drivers do reverse every three or four years, and you'll see a wetter time in Africa, and a, a, a drier time in Africa, and a, a wetter time here. But at the moment, that El Nino is all the way over here, and the Indian Dipole is also over here, and you're seeing a lot of dryness. That's what we're seeing. Positive IOD coincides with the drying influence of the El Nino in the Pacific, both drawing rainfall away from Australia. And that is not to say that it is not climate change because it is on this rotation. I think it has got a lot to do with climate change. Now you may freak out, you say climate change is real, climate change is real, you might be fucking tattooing that on your arm, you might be one of those climate change protest fuckheads that are annoying the shit out of everyone. I think it is I think it does play a role here and the reason I say that is because I'm not a climate scientist and 99 out of 100 climate scientists say that it is an issue so who the fuck am I to say that they're wrong? I don't know what the fuck... I can't even do algebra anymore. What the fuck would I know? This country is in dire straits. We've seen horrifying photos and images and videos over the last couple of weeks but uh, fixing climate change right now is not going to help us in the short term. It might help us in the long term, but my question and the reason for this video is what can we do right now? Let's start with everyone stop saying thoughts and prayers, all right? Thoughts and prayers is fucking nothing. It's a nothing statement made by dipshits. You think thoughts and prayers work? Don't you think starving African kids have been doing thoughts and prayers for years and it's done fuck all good for them? So what do you think that ScoMo or Bill Shorten or any dickhead gets up and says, hey, yeah, thoughts and prayers. No one cares. Do something about it. 
Oh, and by the way, if you own a service station or a convenience store and you think that because your area is currently inflicted with fire damage that it's okay to increase the price of water bottles by 8,000%, you sir or madam, it's 2020, are a complete and utter cunt bag. On the topic of selling water, perhaps the New South Wales government probably shouldn't be selling off all the water from the Murray-Darling Basin to these cotton farmers and maybe put a little bit back into the land so the fucking land isn't dry as a dead dingo's dogger! And fuck me, sideways can we do some more back burning? Now of course I don't mean back burning, what I mean is hazard reduction burning, but everyone knows it is back burning, so for the point of this video, Backburning. But backburning in reality is actually where you, you burn a little gap between you and the fire front so it stops the fire front. I think I did look at the diagram, but anyway, you burn that. Hazard reduction is the burning that you see happening in winter and autumn and those type of times where they're trying to get rid of all the fuel off the ground. Because I don't know if you've ever walked out in the bush. I did it recently. I went and had a bit of a squeeze, did some research on the ground, go me. And I looked at the ground and it is full of fucking leaves, twigs. It looks like it hasn't been touched by a fire for 20 years. I'm concerned because that's around my house, it would, it would make sense to me that that part of the world needs to have a fire soon to get rid of all that shit. So, for fuck's sake, pull your fingers out, alright? I'm not talking about fire, I'm talking about the government, and do more backburning. Because there are a lot of backburning efforts, sorry, hazard reduction efforts going on at the moment, there's just not enough. And the reason there's not enough is, has to do with insurance, right? People don't want to risk lighting a fire that's going to destroy homes. But it also has to do with people having protests. The Greens protesting against backburning. It happened in Gippsland. This was a post uh, put up by ABC Gippsland. And they were protesting because they didn't want too much carbon from the fires to go off into the atmosphere. Well, that did a fucking great job. The whole area's fucking burnt now and all the carbon's in the air, you twats. Also, little side note, ABC Gippsland allegedly uh, deleted that post because they didn't want to look like fuckwits. Well, guess what? You do, you dodgy fuckheads. There needs to be more manpower, more volunteers, more paid people involved with this. Why are we not paying the RFS volunteers? They should be paid for their time and paid more. They might be doing it now, the government, but they need to be paid more. We're spending 4.8 zero four billion dollars every single year on foreign aid now foreign aid is important because there's a lot of people doing it tough but right now we have people doing it tough too and i'm sure that amount of money could be spent very, very wisely in these fire ravaged areas we need more help from the army, the military in general we have air support, we have naval support at the moment, we have troops on the ground but we need more each fire season should be treated like a war we should deploy troops into the field to reduce the risk to the people of Australia, the ones that they swear to protect. And on the topic of protecting people, arsonists should be locked up by the police for fucking life. Fuck those cunts. Last year before being defeated at the election, Bill Shorten pledged $18 million into the defence of Australia against fires. And one of the things that he spoke about was smoke jumpers. Smoke jumpers are people who jump out of aeroplanes or helicopters to go and put out spot fires or try and help stop the fire front. A very smart idea, something that I think the uh, li Liberal government should absolutely employ immediately. People suggest there's other things going on like there's a Chinese government conspiracy, rail line conspiracies, and I haven't looked into them at all, but please, if you want to let me know about them, let me know in the comments section below. A lot of things need to be done, but one thing that also needs to be done is Scott, ScoMo, don't go on fucking holidays in the middle of a fucking disaster, you fucking goose. I know fires happen every year, but a bad time to go. As I said in my video a couple of weeks ago, you don't get fucking holidays, dude. All right, you're the PM. You stay there. Oi, Prime Minister. You can have time in the pool, but don't go to fucking Hawaii, you turd. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have all the answers. I, of course I fucking don't have the answers, all right? I'm just some dude with a beard. But I think a lot of things need to be done differently. We have enormous amounts of people out there fighting for people's homes and lives right now. And to those people, I say thank you for your efforts. But to the people who are thinking about joining the Rural Fire Service, I 
urge you to do that for now or next year or whenever they're having an intake. Get out there and help your community. Ladies and gentlemen, be a good motherfucker. Look after yourselves, all right? Stay safe and have a fire plan ready to go if you are in a bush area. And uh, yeah, me dick stinks. Uh, not because of the fires, but just in general. Uh, be a good motherfucker. Peace in the Middle East, me dick stinks. Toodaloo, off my bye.